Son and of the Holy Spirit. Galimera. The reading from today's Gospel. Thank you, Vasily. The reading from the Holy Gospels today is an interesting reading. I have to, uh, to admit, I have to share with you that for many, many years I uh, didn't understand it much or appreciate it much until I had a few years in the service of the church and the ministry that it opened my eyes to the importance, to the deep meaning of this reading, of this miracle that the Lord Jesus Christ did today. To summarize it very quickly, he was away. A father prayed an epileptic son to the nine disciples, asking them to heal his son. They were unable to heal him. When Jesus came back, he was with John, James, and Peter on the Mount Tabor. When he came back, the father attended again, and he came, and he was accusing, criticizing the disciples for not being able to heal his son. But the Lord rebuked him, and he rebuked the leaders of the people through him, and he healed the boy. When privately the disciples asked him why they were not able to heal the boy, he spoke to them privately and he told them about their weakness of faith. So this is the story of the gospel today that we are going to reflect upon its meaning and the lessons that it has. The anguish of parents when their children are sick or their children are in danger is something that cannot be described. They become very fragile group of people when their children are in any danger and it's very easy to take advantage of this vulnerable group that are the parents when their children are in any difficult situation. This parent, this father here, he went into the extent of asking Jesus' help, even though he did not believe in Jesus as God. The Gospel reading said he came and he knelt in front of him. He did that out of respect. Because when the Lord questioned his faith, he confessed, he admitted that he could not be, he did not believe, and he asked for help with his faith. So children are also a vulnerable group, and they need a lot of care. And this father who was helpless in front of the mental sickness of his son, he was desperate. He had tried everything possible. And he had this one last opportunity, one last chance, because he had heard about Jesus Christ from all the people in Palestine at the time who had benefited from the healing powers and miraculous power of Jesus Christ. So he came. He came and he knelt in front of the Lord and he asked for his help and he did not want to miss out on this opportunity. The Lord, Jesus Christ, used this opportunity of healing the boy first to heal the faith of the father. So, and that's why he asked him and he said, everything is possible 
for those who believe. But also, Jesus sent a very strong message through this father, through this parent, to all parents. And as we are going to see, this message is relevant even to all of the parents today. What did Jesus say? He said, bring him to me. Bring the children to me. Bring them to me. That what is the Lord message today. Bring your children to God. How often parents forget about the importance of God for their children? How often we, they forget about that crucial element in the life of their children? When do parents remember the importance of God to their children? When they are in danger. Yet, God is happy. Even if God is the last resource, even if God is the last or the least preferred choice, God, as we see in this miracle, as we see in this story, he was still happy to heal the boy. And he asked that the boy immediately brought to him. Even when he wasn't the first or the most preferred option. Parents want to, he to see their children do well. Parents want to see their children safe. And parents, for that reason, allocate tremendous resources for the education and the rearing of their children. They take, they dedicate a tremendous amount of time for driving their children around, taking them to activities, and spending resources to develop their intellectual, athletic, musical, whatever other skills their children have. However, they dedicate very little resources toward the divine education and upbringing of their children. They don't perceive that the lack of divine education in the life of their children is something lacking. However, God's perspective is different. God sees that as a tremendous mistake. Now, when Jesus spoke to the, to the father, to the dad, he spoke in public and he rebuked not only the father, he rebuked all the leaders of the people. Because the leaders of the people back then, just like the leaders and the influencers of the people today, they don't care much about the connection of God with children. There are many examples that uh, we, can, we can recite. And the simplest example is, no longer children are encouraged or taught to pray throughout their school years. The healing of the boy started with the healing of the father. Because the healing of our children starts with the healing of the parents. The Lord asked the parent, this dad, about his faith. He made the statement, if you believe everything is possible for those who believe, this is a powerful message to all of us that we should take it into consideration and realize how pertinent this message that the Lord gave to this father today to our current society. The child reflect the children of today. His suffering reflect the suffering that 
children are facing today and the careless father who did not care much to connect this boy with Jesus is the image of the fathers of the parents today. Now, what some are of the challenges that face children today? I'm not going to bore you with statistics, just very quick uh, description. Suicide currently is the leading number two, the leading number two element that endanger children between the age of 10 and 24. Reason number two for death among children is suicide. Children suffer from anxiety, depression, concentration problem, sleep disorder, food disorder, anger, bullying, being irritable. They are not able to uh, face their emotions or, or deal with their emotions. These are only a few of the challenges that children have that they are not able to resolve on their own. If they were connected with God, the story, the, 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 the situation would be very different. Now, why the mental crisis of children is on the rise and all those uh, emotional problems are on the rise? Again, I'm not going to bore you with statistics. But if you look, if you look at the faith of the parents in America, the last 30 years, there is a major change, major change in the perspective of Americans about God and about Christ. Some of the studies show 30 years ago, people spent considerable time thinking and learning about God just 30 years ago. However, the, the current situation today is very different as people have walked away from the core beliefs of Christianity in America. Christians, I'm talking about Christians, Christians no longer believe that Jesus is the path to salvation. These studies were not among Christians, not among the general public. Because parents, because Christian parents no longer strongly believe that Jesus is the way of salvation, they don't introduce their children to Jesus Christ. So there is a connection here. In this story, the, the nine disciples were not able to heal the boy because, first of all, the lack of the faith of the father that the church or the apostles or the disciples are able to do something for his child. So when parents do not believe that the church can do something for their children is the first predicament stopping the benefits of the church in the life of their children. More than half of Americans today do not believe in the existence of the absolute moral. And more than half of the Americans today believe that the basis of truth are factors or sources other than God. So, the walking away from the core of the Christian faith among Christian parents has consequences in the life with, of their children and the situation of their children. Most of today's culture practices are self-centered. We said 30 years ago, 
people spend a lot of time thinking and learning about God. Today, most of our energy is focused upon ourselves. So, I hope you can see the connection between his father, the mental illness of his child, the challenge that he had, and the parents today, and the challenges their children, or our children, or the children of our nation are facing. Now, just to put things in perspective, in order to get a child from birth until the end of high school, approximately the resources needed, they are enough to build a upper class, middle, upper, upper level middle class house. This is how much resources it costs. And to get the child from graduation of high school to finish college studies, it, the cost is about a second house. So, parents in each child are investing in two houses. Okay? But these two houses that they are investing in, they have no place for God in them, and they are not being built with God in thought, or with God uh, intervention, or with God contribution. So, what parent want to go into the extent of this investment only to see their children suffering from mental illnesses, depressed, or even lose them to suicide. If you are a parent that desire to see your children do well, then invest wisely in your children and bring them to God. Let them know the Lord on a personal basis by learning, by teaching them how to pray and how to connect with God. If your faith is weak or lacking, as the case was with this father, let the Lord strengthen and heal your faith the same way he healed the faith of this dad. The ultimate purpose of children rearing the upbringing of children is not to fill their brain with information. The ultimate purpose of upbringing children is to introduce them to the true God. Speak to God about your children every day. Speak to God about your children every part of the day. Set the example to your children of how to create a relationship with God by you having a conversation with God through prayers all the time. It is important for children to realize that their parents have a relationship with God and their parents do pray every time, every, every part of the day and at home and they pray for them to God. Let your children grow up learning from your example that God is the true source of life. Teach your children that Jesus Christ is the absolute truth of life and the most crucial person in life and in their life. Thank you very much.